there are four main things that I think that we can take away from this story. We've all heard this story. This is like the first Bible story I ever heard in Sunday school. I always thought it was one of the coolest Bible studies, Bible stories too, because I used to practice with an actual you know, a fin slingshot. I wanted to be David. I always looked for giants to take down, but they would never let me. I tried it on my brother once. It didn't work. Uh, but there, there are four main points, and this story is is so it's about so much more than future king of Israel facing giants. It's about so much more than that. And we can apply this to our lives. We all have giants to face down in our lives. We all have obstacles that we need to overcome. For David, Goliath was a big scary man who wanted to kill him. For us, an addiction might be our Goliath. Fear might be our Goliath. Whatever it is, Whatever obstacle that you face, you have to face it. And God will go with you, but you have to face it. And so, point number one is we have to we have to research the controlling factors. Know your surroundings. David went down to investigate the battle. So, okay, two armies on either side, a giant in the middle. Nobody facing the giant. Cowering king. The Hulk. Cowards. Okay. So in order to win this battle, I've got to take out the controlling factor being the lion. So he researched this. He knew what he was up against. And so in our lives, when things start coming up against us, when we feel the weight of the burdens on us, when we feel the giants pressing in, know your surroundings. If you struggle with fear, figure out what it is that makes you afraid. If you struggle with addiction, determine what the factors are that lead you to that addiction. Research the controlling factors. Know what you're up against. Number two, this is my favorite one, because I do this a lot. Rebuke the naysayers. Meaning, somebody tells you you can't do something and you know that God is calling you to do it, don't let them get away with telling you you can't do it. Call them out. Look, this is what I have to do. David had had three different groups telling him that he was never going to be able to accomplish this. He had his brother tell him to go back and tend the sheep where he belonged. He had Saul tell him, you're too small to do this. He had Goliath not only insulting David, but defying the very God that David served. I feel like a lot of times in our, in our struggles in our lives, there are people who tell us that we can't do it, that we can't overcome the obstacles, that we'll never be good enough. And you're right, they're right. We'll never be good enough on our own. David trusted the Lord. David knew that this battle was ultimately not his. He was the one who had to carry it out, but the battle was God's. And so if you're struggling with anything, if there's anything that you're going through, God will help you through it. you just got to be willing your part. You've got to be willing to chuck that stone at the giant's forehead and bring it down. Don't let people tell you that God can't do it. To quote Reliant K, never underestimate my Jesus, because he can do what I cannot. That's point number two, repeat the naysayers. Number three is remember your past victories. Remember the times that God has come through for you in the past. When David is he's in Saul's court talking to him, Saul's telling him, there's no way you can do this. David says, you're right, I can't, but God can. But I can't tell you the times that I've been out in the fields. I've chased down bears and I've chased down lions. They haven't hurt me. God's brought me through that. God's going to bring me through this. I will be okay. There's nothing that is going to take away the victory from the Lord. But David had to do it alone. Like I said in the video, this task is appointed to you. For some of us, we have to overcome these things on our own. But God will be there. He will never leave us. 
that point number four is prepare for a long battle. Prepare for a long battle. David chose five stones from the stream. David knew without a doubt that God was going to give him absolute victory in this circumstance, but he had no way of knowing that his first shot would land. So he took five stones. He had the opportunity for five shots. Prepare for a long battle. David was prepared to take as many shots as he could to at this giant to bring him down. He knew God was going to give him the victory. didn't know how long it would take. God will give you the victory over anything you're struggling with. But prepare for a long battle. Prepare for a long battle. As long as we live in this world, as long as we share this existence, there will be times of uncertainty. There will be giants that we have to face, probably literally and figuratively. Um, hopefully none of us will have to actually kill a giant, but you never know. But it's not us who will do the work. It's the Lord. It is God and God's power alone that will accomplish that. And so whatever you're going through, whether you're struggling with addiction, whether you're struggling with fear, whatever you're struggling with, give it to God. Let him take it. Be willing to go where he sent you to go. I completely forgot about the story that I was going to kick off this sermon with at the beginning, but I'll tell it now. I'll never forget the time that I had to face a giant. Now this is, I lost, by the way. Two years ago, May of 2009, in West Elk Wilderness in Colorado, my giant was a mountain that I had to climb. Now this was not a life-threatening issue at first. Two days into our nine-day trip to Colorado, walking a harmless, seemingly harmless little trail, and I pulled a muscle in my thigh. Didn't think much of it at the time. I thought, all right, this will just go away. It didn't. And so the last, the, the last four days of our trip, we were camping out in this incredible wilderness. We camped at 9,000 feet, and on our final day, the, um, we were going to hike up to 12,600 feet, the highest point. Colorado. And I knew that I couldn't walk very well. But we set out on our great adventure. I took that picture, limping behind the rest of the group. Next picture, did. We kept climbing higher. With every step, my leg hurt more. I looked into the distance and saw where we had to go, and I thought, this is impossible. I will never be able to do this. I was very, very unhappy to be there. <laughs> that was a much needed break that lasted you know, nowhere near long enough. All right, next slide. So we're walking up paths like that, I'm tripping, falling most of the way. We keep walking, and we see uh, the ultimate destination of our journey here. And I'm thinking, Great, I can't walk, how am I going to do that? To make matters worse, we found out that we weren't alone. Um, we're pretty sure that was a bear track. It was, looking back on it now, it's pretty much the, the size of it. How it looked to me at the time. Um, it was scary, it was scary. All right, next slide. So we keep getting closer, keep getting closer. We, our, the professor that I was with told us we're going to take this path straight up. And it looked impossible, but then we veered off over to the to the next slide. <laughs> and we, there's a little path up to the top. We kept going. Is that the last one? Uh, one more after one. Oh, there I am trying to hike up the top. It was either try to follow them or wait down at the bottom of this huge, huge incline uh, with the bear. <laughs> um, that's the view from the top. We finally made it to the top. I actually didn't, but my camera did. The view, the end result, was more spectacular than anything I could have ever imagined. It was worth the pain. It was worth the struggle of overcoming the mountain. But it didn't come 
easy. There was one point where I decided I couldn't go any further. So the, my group went on ahead of me, and I'm standing out in the middle of the wilderness, literally. You could look in any direction and see that. There's not a soul around for miles. And I looked up on the top of the ridge next to us that you saw in the picture, and there, walking towards me, some distance away, was a mountain lion. <laughs> no sign of my group, but the mountain lion was looking at me, and he looked hungry. Wow. I was hungry, too. <laughs> Probably not as hungry as he was. So, Decided, I'm gonna sit down. What the heck? Sit down, and if it takes me, it takes me. Whatever. At that point, I just wanted the pain in my leg to go away. So I sat down on the on the rain poncho that I had, and immediately started sliding down the mountain. Um, now I knew I saw very quickly there were two directions that I could go. One was to keep going down and head straight over the ledge. Or two, there was a little group of boulders in front of me that I could smash into. So it was either plummeting to a very painful death or having a very abrupt end. Painful. And painful. So I chose the boulders. But in order to do that, I had to dig my hand into the snow and ice, which was, this was May at this point. This was hard. This was really, um, I don't know. Anyway, it was bad. So I see that I'm heading toward the ledge. The only way that I could head toward the rock was to dig in and prepare for a long time. And it was. It seemed like a long time. It was probably only about 25 seconds total. So finally, I put my legs out in front of me and smashed into the rock. Huh, that hurt. <laughs> but I survived. And then I turned around and I saw that. And that made it all worth it. Everything that I had gone through to get to that point. I saw the majesty of God. Sometimes we have to go through these times. We have to bring down the giant before we can see the view that he's blocking. God will always bring us to that point. We'll always be able to look back and see what we've missed and see what the struggle has brought us. And it will be majestic. It will be incredible. Most of the pain in my legs dissipated, I was able to see that. <laughs> and then walk back the six and a half miles to camp. <laughs> uh, I ate him for dinner. I had a slick shit. Um, so I, I tell that story and hopefully ties it together. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're going through, whatever giants you face, know that God's in you. That's the greatest thing we can pull out of this passage from, from David. Know that God is with you. God would use David, God would use David's line, David's ancestry to bring about our great hope. To bring about our Messiah. David didn't always get it right. And this at this point in time in the passage when David faces Goliath, he has the faith of a child. And that's what Jesus called us to have faith like a child. David would get many things wrong as his life continued. But God still used him in powerful ways and brought our great hope. God allowed David to overcome not just Goliath, but every giant that he faced for the rest of his life because God was doing something amazing in David's life. God was preparing the world through David and through his descendants for the one who would come and fix everything. We're still waiting for that. Still waiting for that. We have the promise, we have the hope that Jesus is coming back. And He goes before us to slay the giants. If we just follow Him and do what's required of us, we'll see that end result. We'll see glory. We'll see majesty. And that, that's the greatest hope I can bring you today.